this video lecture we're going to cover what the binomial distribution is. So why do we need to care about the binomial distribution in food science? Well, here's a small example, a triangle a triangularity test where you use a sensorical panel or some consumers to judge whether you can distinguish two, two different products. So here I have three glasses of juice and two of them are similar and one of them are different. So the, the test is, can you actually taste which one is different? And in this case, you can either answer correctly or wrongly. And that makes the data binomial. You can either have these two options of outcome. So the learning objectives of this short video is to understand what binary data is, understand what the binomial distribution is, understand the difference between point probabilities and cumulative probabilities, and be able to calculate point probabilities and cumulative probabilities. So this is one representation of binary data. So here I have a set of observations. There is in total 18 observations, and some of them are zero, and some of them are one. This is the only two ways um, the response can be. There can be only two outcome types. It could be zero or one, plus, minus, yes, no, and so forth. But you have to be aware of that there is only two possibilities. So this goes, for instance, for toss a coin, or whether you measure somebody over a certain threshold, a correct or a non-correct answer, a positive or negative test. So that's examples. These Here we see the same data, just in another representation. So up here we have zero and ones, and down here we have an n, indicating how many measurements are there, and an X indicating how many of them are positive. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Um, so six positive. In order to describe these data, we only need three things. We need the number of tests, we need the number of ones, the observed X here, and then a probability for X that is observing just one um, out of one. So if we take the example of tossing a coin, I toss a coin 10 times, so n is 10, and I count the number of heads. So now we could ask ourselves, what is the probability of getting 10 heads? Or we could ask ourselves, what is the probability of getting 6 tails? So if we just take the first one, I want to toss a coin 10 times, and I want it to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, how many was that, 1, so that's 10 times, n equals to 10, and x equals to 10. Well, I have to assume something here, I have to assume a probability for the coin to be head. And I assume that probability is 0 0.5, so half, that it's a true coin. And then I need to calculate the probability of this happening. So the probability of the first one being, being coin, being head, is p. The probability of the second one being head is p, and so forth up to this guy. And what I do by these numbers is I multiply them, because I want all of them to happen, and I assume that tossing a coin is independent of the last toss. So here I have p times p up to 10 times. So that is p to the power of 10, or more in general, p to the power of x. Yeah. So this will be... 0 0.5 to the power of 10, which is a very low number. So that was the first question. The second question was, the second question was, what is the probability of getting six tails? So if I want to have six tails, I need to have exactly four heads. So x is four in this case. 
So I want something like this, one, 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 and then zero, 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 zero. That is x equals to four. So what I do is I do exactly the same as up here. I say p times p times p times p. That was the four hits, these four first draws. And then I the probability of getting zero if the probability of getting hit 1 is p, then the probability of getting 0 is 1 minus p. And I get in total 6 of those guys multiplied together. So if we merge this, we'll get p to the power of x, x is 4. And then there's 6 of these guys, so that's 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. Well, in this case, I miss something. I miss out that this combination gives me four heads and six tails, but I could have other representations where I also would have four heads and six tails. That could, for instance, be I would have zero here, zero here, one, 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 and zeros for the rest of them. So what I need to do is I need to say, well, this is the probability of getting exactly this draw. And then I need to multiply it by how many different ways I can combine 4 in 10. And this we write as something called the binomial coefficient, which is n over x. So we need to multiply that one here, n over x. And we'll get back to what the results for this one is. So back to the slides. So here we have what we call the point probability. So the point probability is the probability of x being exactly equal to a one to a single number. And it goes like this. It's the binomial coefficient, which counts how many ways I can combine x and n. And then the positive part p to the power of x, and the one, the negative part, 1 minus p to the power of n minus x. That is the point probability. Focusing a little on the binomial coefficient, well, this guy tells me how many times I can combine, how many combinations there exist of x and n, and it's calculated in this way. So it's n factorial over x factorial times n minus x factorial. So a short exercise here in, on, in order to understand how this one works is to say, well, how many ways can I combine two positives in five possible? So n is five and x is two. Let's go to this one. So I want to combine two out of five. So one, one option is I have them at the first position. One is that I have them at the second position, like this, and so forth. So this is the total number of combinations that I have. And if I count how many combinations that is, that is 10. So this is one way of doing it. Another way is to say, well, the position of the first positive draw, how many places can that one be? So the first positive draw can be at five places. Then the second positive draw can be at not five places, but four places. And then that would be double up because the first positive draw can be at position one and the second at position two, and the first could also be at position two, and then the second at position one, which would be exactly the same draw. So we need to divide this one by two. And this one also reveal that we get 10. If we want to calculate it by the binomial coefficient, we say five faculty divided by two faculty, five minus two faculty, so this one is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This one is 2 times 1. And this one is 3 times 2 times 1. 
we see that these ones are the same here, so we can we can simply just do like this. And we see that's 5 times 4 divided by 2 times 1, so 2, 4, that's this one, and 2 instead. And we will get equal to 10. So in this case, where x is equal to 4, we would get 10 over 4 times p to the power of 4 and 1 minus p to the power of 10 minus 4. And this we can calculate to some number. So this guy is 210. If we assume that p is a half, then it's 0 0.5 to the power of 4 times 0 0.5 to the power of 6, which is 210 times 0 0.5 to the power of 10 equal to 0 0.205. So the probability of getting 4 out of 10 is actually 0 0.2, which is a pretty high probability. But if you think about it, the probability of getting one head is a half, and 4 out of 10, that's close to half. So this number should be pretty high. It's likely to get 4 out of 10, you could say. So that was the point probability. In order to be able to calculate what is called the cumulative probability, we simply just say, well, what is the cumulative probability? Well, that is the probability of observing a number, for instance, 4, or less than that number. So x needs to be less than or equal to some number x. So that is simply just summarizing the point probabilities. If x should be less than 4, I simply just sum what is less than 4. That is x equal to 0 plus x equal to 1, and so forth, up to the upper bound. So this is the cumulative probability. Often we want to calculate the probability of x being larger than or equal to some number. Well, that is taking the point probabilities of the lowest x and add on probability of x being x plus 1 up to x equal to n. This one is equal to 1 minus x being less than this number. If x should be larger than or equal to 4, then 1 minus x being less than 4 is the same. And we can turn that into this guy down here by saying, well, the probability of x being less than 4 is the same as the probability of x being less than or equal to 3. The function in R, which we use for this, is called P binome and takes the free inputs like this. So now if we want to calculate the probability of getting a range of solutions, for instance, what is the probability of getting at least six heads? What is the probability of getting more than six heads? Or what is the probability of getting five or less tails? Let's just see how this goes. We, st we have n time, n is equal to 10, and we have a p, which we assume is equal to a half. So the first one is, we just write up the model, binomially distributed n times p, n equals to 10, p equals to a half. The first question is, what is the probability of x being at least 6? Well, that is 1 minus the probability of x being less than 6, which is equal to 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 5. And this guy we can calculate directly in R. So this one will be 1 minus p binome of 5, 10, and a half. So this was the first question. 
The second question was, what is the probability of getting more than six heads? So the second question was, we want more than six heads, so x should be larger than six. Well, that is equal to one minus the probability of x being less than or equal to six. Larger than six, that means seven and up, which means we don't want to include the probabilities of six, five, four, three, down to zero. So this is one p binome. Six, ten, and a half. Likewise. The last question is, what is the probability of getting five or less tails? If we want to have five or less tails, we need the number of heads to be at least five or more. If we have five heads, we have five tails, that's okay. If we have four heads, we will have six tails, that's not okay. So we need five or more heads. So the third question is formulated like this. P of x should be more than or equal to five. One minus p x should be less than five. One minus p of x less than or equal to four. One minus p I know four, ten and a half. If we go into R and see how this is done, let me just first define what N is. N is ten, P is zero point five, so N ten, P zero point five. And now I simply just use the p binome function. p binome function. And I want it to be six or more. So six times n times p. I get these probabilities. I also had a question which well, this one was five. And I had one which where this one was four. So this is how easy it is to do in R. The thing you need to think about here is that you need to do the rearrangement of the question before you go into R, because R don't have a functionality for, for turning the cumulative probability into a probability of more than some number. This you have to do by yourself by putting in one minus in front. If you want to calculate the point probabilities in R, that is dead easy. Instead of using P binome, you use what is called D binome. And for instance, if you want to calculate 10 for, so 10 positives out of 10, it's this number. That's it.